Oh, what's up, everybody? I'm Ruben Orozco, uh, born and raised Fort Worth, uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And um, uh, a lot of people know me by Weddle. Uh, my government name is Ruben. But the graph name that I used to write, and I also still write now, but a different whole, uh, meaning to it is AWOL, which stands now for Always Worshiping One Lord. Um, I've always had a passion for graffiti, but... The business that came from from that was DNG Designs with a Z, um, and now I, I can use that as ministry. So I use graffiti as ministry, and uh, you're watching the breakdown. Man, uh, I say the early '80s, man. Uh, since I was born in 78, um, and, and I thank God to the day how I just, I made it past 21 and didn't know I was going to live that, but to be this older, if not, I would have really took better care of myself. Um, I grew up next to two dope houses, and um, it was on the west side of Fort Worth, and uh, kind of near Como, and uh, yeah, but I-30 I was, was it, and um, I grew up like my backyard was actually the train yards and um but the two dope house two dope houses was um was it was you know i, I don't want to really i don't want to say too much like trying to go in depth but green on one side white on the other and then this one heroin and stuff was hitting the streets and uh, people shooting up i i saw that as age of five and you know uh, why is this dude passed out why is this you know what i mean it's just it was weird to me Broad daylight, yeah. Well, I wasn't. Anyways, but I didn't. Um, I didn't realize the 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 fact, the, the 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 influence that that dope can actually have on an individual until I started getting up in like nine and ten. Um, my parents didn't didn't go to like graduate from school. My dad straight from Mexico, from Michoacan. Um, he he gave me his stories. Um, how he didn't really go to school. He was out and you know being a shepherd man. And, and it's weird, but now that I see it as a shepherd boy, um, it's deep, man. Um, biblically speaking. Um, and then my mom, she she only went to like the fifth grade, man. And um, you know them not even having it. So when I had glasses, I didn't even know I needed to wear glasses until the teacher was like, "Hey, this dude can't really see." And matter of fact, later on they knew I couldn't read, so I was illiterate man when it came to learning um, I had three older sisters I still have them and they didn't really they were too much trying to grow up and find themselves so I was just growing up without even knowing um, how can I explain it I, I, I kind of grew up on my own in a sense like where I didn't grow up in a church home um, where scripture was involved um, so far as where people sit down at one table, where everybody eats together. I didn't grow up like that. I didn't grow up where the my own parents say, "Hey, I love you." You know what I mean? Because and later on, I, I can share how how that influenced me to the day why I do my I, I do that now. Um, but now, nah, man, just seeing how how drugs was easy to get a hold of, um, how a high was kind of like to escape the reality. But whenever you 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 get high got to come back down um and then you feel low you know um drinking that wasn't my specialty but my dad always drank so i was like you know what um i'm gonna try that too you know um and i drank a little bit as early age but as as i started seeing this easy money and people driving different things it's like now being a teenager um and then not only that but on the west side of town there was gangs and um, I, I kind of like that's that's who really kind of show love in a sense of a false love where they think they for you, but they paid attention to you. You know, um, um, I, I want to say I was lured in. So in other words, it's like I started seeing how drug kind of sold itself and people had me hey go take this go take this and i'll take it and i'm like well they're gonna give you this amount of money and then later on they give like a little 25 so you kind of like elevate kind of
kind of in, in, in the whole dope game. So a 25 pistol, man, and and uh, I don't know. It just like it felt like like I, I could control now. So now I didn't have to have respect. And I was real humble, and I was actually uh, bashful. If y'all know what that is, is to be real shy, quiet. That was me, and I, I can believe I, I'm still that man. But uh, after being picked on and stuff, it's like it, it, it kind of created a monster in me like not no more you know what i mean after you get bigger and, and you start hitting weights and you know what i mean as my teenage years i was like hanging around people and you ain't finna get punked man like you have to be you have to become a wolf as well um and i, I heard i i so somebody has said that man like you have to adapt to the environment that you're living in even though i, I didn't have no tattoos and i had finally got my glasses um I had my aunt instill that in me. It's like, man, you need a tutor. A tutor is so where I, I wouldn't get taught literature, how to spell, read my grammar, punctuation, all that. And I didn't know that. So as, as, as I got older, I started developing reading habits. So I started learning how to read. And then my glasses, like I used to get made fun of because I used to have the tape um, on the side of my glasses where I couldn't just get glasses. My dad was too busy on um, you know getting drunk doing this thing and he wouldn't invest in me man and plus we didn't have a lot so that's why i kind of went towards the easy money um and you, you got to think about this too man when it comes easy it also goes easy um so yeah so now with the um hang around gangs and, and and doing what gang members do they always try to jump me in man but I, I didn't. I didn't want to be. Like I didn't feel like I needed them. You know, that makes that makes sense. Like I was cool by myself, and I always knew if I came into this world by myself, I'm gonna leave by myself. And I grew up with my mentality like that, even when I got locked up. And um, so I was locked up four times. But as we did, like when drive-bys were in, um, I was actually like the getaway driver a lot of times, man. And, and actually just standing in front of somebody's house and then just dumping on, on on whoever, bro. Windows, you know what I mean? And cars. Just park and, and do do the work, man. And just wait till somebody somebody run up. Get done up. Y'all, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. And I started seeing that. So I started hanging around people who 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 murder. I started hanging around people who are moving weight and um they were actually quiet too because if you realize man the people that do a lot of talking there there's not a there's not a lot of action behind that because a lot of people ain't gonna really say what they do they just gonna move in silence and um i started seeing that so i just kept my cool and act like i didn't know nothing but i was living like a double standard at my house i was one thing when i left and closed the door i became a whole nother individual so now as my late teens i started was like man if i can get a I wonder if I can get a chick pregnant. You know what I'm saying? And this is crazy, bro. Cause uh, on the cool time, it's like I, I was like, man, I'm really saying like, could I even have kids? You know? So that's when you start trying to get it, be attracted to females. And um, yeah, man. So I had my first daughter after still doing dirt and sh whatever they call baby mama she she heard stories of how i almost just got killed my my head almost got blown off uh, uh had a had a had a double barrel at my head uh a pistol in my mouth later on in life man so it was just going downhill but pretty fast um you can't do dirt forever and think you're gonna come out of it you know once it rains on you it's what turns to mud so that's when people get stuck um um uh, I had my first daughter, which she, my girl at the time said she was, she was 18 and she said she was pregnant. I didn't want that baby. Let's get rid of it. She couldn't get rid of it. Um, later on, the abortions were, were really real. Um, and then not even a year later, she was pregnant again. And so now it's two. So at 19, I was already a dad. And um, at 20, I became a dad again. But before I hit 27, I already had three daughters. And uh, yeah, I had a good job, but I was a functioning addict. So hanging around drugs, you automatically, drugs are involved. Spray painting is involved. And I think at the age of like five or six, man, I was seeing, I, I, I experienced spray paint for the first time. 
and um, just to transition into like my whole testimony but spray paint you know when they huff painting in the cans where they spray the can they put that penny at the bottom of it and they stir it up it's gold is what they used to huff and that's how they used to get high just straight up just huffing the can and um I, 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 that's where I first experienced the spray paint and in the art what I knew I had a passion for it is when they used to detail the, the windows with the etch of uh, on the windows of lowriders and then the paint jobs of the lowriders and I was like oh yeah I'm, I'm liking this this is this is my 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 culture you know what I'm saying Tatuajes tats was another one I started seeing the tats, people sleeved out, coming out of prison, you know what I mean? And um, actually people doing tattoos was 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 always, um, it's art. So, but it was like a, I don't want to say a perverted type of art, but it was a misleading type of skill and talent to me. Um, so I started vandalizing already, uh, representing my neighborhood. And then um, when I had my kids, it's like, I was like, I, I didn't want to come to the realization that I was going to be a dad, so I started smoking weed even more. And then as I kept smoking and smoking, actually, you know, yeah, they say it's a gateway drug. And that's for real, because you can only get so high. And if you, you smoke weed, you have smoked weed, you can only get so high. So what you want to do? You want to go higher. So going higher, man, it's like, all right, there's some other drugs that can, you think that we're going to fill you up. Uh, get you to where you're trying to go and it don't man and um i say as uh moving weight man as having people front me pounds and 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 just getting eight balls you know what i'm saying just thinking that i could say i did that you know um i still have a good job but at the same time i'm trying to sell dope and have a job and these kids weren't really my um my priority it was about me um after getting shot at and just getting tired of that lifestyle, man, my fourth time getting locked up was um, in 08. I'm sorry, in 05, I was actually uh, already 27 at the time. And I was already wearing my third daughter. And uh, I met this this chick named Jennifer, and she was my, I guess, some chick I was seeing. She wasn't, I didn't see her as a girlfriend, but it was just a chick I was seeing. She already had a daughter with her, but in, in a man's eyes who's lost, you know, it's just like, just because y'all y'all fooling around doesn't mean y'all together does that make sense um, and i'm just trying to keep it 100 man and um i didn't see it like that i just seen that she was there but she wasn't like uh my girl at the time somebody you fooling with and um i told her to get rid of the daughter too and uh, or wh whatever baby she was pregnant with and she couldn't but she kept it and i kept that baby from my parents for like after three months already since she was already born so about three or four months old she, my parents seen her and they were like hey, well you know what else you keeping from us so i had got locked up and that's when the time that she had to come around because she had to get me out so my mom and finally knew the baby knew who this chick was and um she was shining a light on me man she was a christian girl man went to bible college didn't cuss didn't drink didn't smoke and i didn't really want to be with her at the time because i wanted people to do what i did and, uh, you know, female, come party with you, do your thing. We all do dirt together. Um, I want to say, and that's like beyond sipping syrup and shrooms and acid and, you know, the popping pills, the, the, all that extra, man, and, and, and getting, like the, before it was, like, they called it, you know, the ice, you know, that, that meth, bro. And I got caught up, man, lacing stuff with crack, man, with, with hitting primos and you know what I mean and um, I, I like to get full if I'm gonna get high I'm, I'm gonna go all out so that was my mentality uh, so if you're really real in the world man you, you're gonna be doing what, what, what the world does and uh, especially you if you're already surrounded by it man why not um, so let me see man um, in 05 bro like when I was locked up man I kid you not um I started see I was already going to church for about 10 maybe 11 months and but I was going high like three days no sleep just going chew some gum get some lotion smoke a blunt on the way to church because I knew that there was something in the church that could help me because I was trying to get off for 10 years already 
and I'll be at a dope house and I'll tell people, let's go. So I was already a leader, like trying to lead people to Christ, but I, I didn't even have Christ. I didn't know who Christ was. And um, we're still kind of get in the car and we try to make it a church, man. And it was crazy how, we, as long as we can get in that door, we good. And I kept going for about 10, 11 months, man. And uh, I got locked up. I caught a case in 05 and uh, it's my last one. Um, I sat in county, Tarrant County, and um, I seen a, a book after like a week being in there, man, or two weeks. I, I seen a book at the bottom, and it didn't have no cover, but it had uh, just the pages, and it said the Holy Bible. I ain't never read it. I seen it in the hotels. We used to break weed up on it, uh, put it upside down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people try to use it as zigzags as long as it had no printing, no no writing on it, like for real, for real. And I seen that, man, but we didn't use it though. We couldn't rip a page out the Bible. You know, it just it just it just seemed like there was something that was powerful about the word. I, I don't know what it was, man, and um it was God and I, I've always known that don't play with God, you know. Even though we were still he I didn't know he we was created by it. And it gets deep. But in 05, man, I seen that Bible and I was thinking something was telling me to go get it. And I didn't really want to go get it, but after like it said, kept saying, just go get it. And like, I don't know, I heard, I, I, the way I see it is like your conscience, but I was being drawn to it. So like the Holy Spirit was, was tugging at my heart to go get it. And um, after I got it, like three or four days later, man, I couldn't take it no more. So I grabbed it, went to my cell. And it said, if you never read the Bible before, start in the book of John. Well, I look at the table of contents and it had one John, two John, three John, and then like a regular John. So I was like, shoot, this one don't have no numbers by it, so I'm going to go to John. And I kid you not, it said in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and then the Word was God. But honestly, before I opened up that Bible, I actually opened up my heart. And that's when the Lord spoke to me. Either you're going to walk with me now or don't even walk with me at all. I didn't know that was even scripture. He that is not for me, he's against me. And I started before I was even asking a question like, all right, God, what are my parents, friends going to think about it, family? And he was like, what are they going to do compared to what I'm going to do? So that's when it even got more real. So I was weeping. And I tested him. All right, you know what? If you, if you are powerful, get me out of here. You clean up my past, you direct my future, I will serve you the rest of my life. But get me out of here. Man, I kid you not, I got out, man, uh, a few weeks later. And um, my life came together like a puzzle. Um, and I, I seen, uh, even though through trials and tribulations, man, you know, he says, be of good cheer. Um, that's real because if you, re and I, I could tell now that I see if you say you want something, God will see how how bad do you want it. Like, are you willing to go through all this to realize that he is all you need? Are you willing to, like, really break through this wall to get to where you're trying to go? And honestly, that's what I really wanted. So I did. I don't care what I was going through as long as I kept my eyes on him, that he will get me out. He'll make a way out of no way. And that's when it got real to me. I smoked one more time before I, when I got out because I still had stuff at my house. And it's like it grieved the spirit of God. So I, I didn't know I was filled already. That that makes any sense. Um, to a believer, yeah, but it's the Holy Spirit. When you invite God into your life, you become born again because you're already born. But people say you only die, you only live once. Well, if you only live once, you're going to die twice. Or would you rather die twice? You know, like, does that make sense? I don't know if you want to edit this part, T. But it said you only live once, die twice. And I was like, well, maybe if, if you if you live twice, all you got to do is die once. So I died to myself. And I became born again. And I invited Christ in my life. And uh, it, it, it became real. So I started, like, persevering. I started enduring. I started seeking him, and uh, I found him. Um, and then I learned that he actually went to where I was. He visited me, uh, clothed me, fed me, uh, gave me drink. And uh, scripture became real. It's that rhema word. It's that logos uh, where where it manifests in your life. Because we have, I have my Bible right here, man. But it, it, it's we have the information. 
but I think now the, 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 what we need is the demonstration and the manifestation of God where people are tired of hearing about the love of God. They're ready to see it. And if we can be his hands and his feet and all that to say, man, after I got saved, like I was literally at a train crossing. I seen trains passing by. So I was already hitting up trains. My buddy uh, was telling me about hitting spray painting and, you know, trying to leave the gang life, go to spray painting. This was before I got saved, but then I started seeing, I let it all go, and I started seeing trains pass, and I still had a passion. But when I saw, like, I was still attracted to that, I was like, man, how can I glorify God through this? I wonder if God will even allow this. I wonder if it'll honor Him. So I lined it up with purpose. So what is He calling me from? If you look at the Bible where it talks about there were, there were fishermen, Peter and 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 how he called them to follow him they're still fishermen but they're fishers of men he could still use your gift and talent but for his purpose and I believe he gave like when he gave Samson the jawbone he gave David uh, a slingshot he gave Moses and he got picked up that, that 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 staff on the way you know there's things that we could pick up in life man and I believe he gave me a spray can to actually if nobody's gonna listen to me man they're gonna see what i got to say through my artwork <laughs> and that's like my voice so yeah man and, and to look at the word pain and then put a that's what brought me to the cross this whole time my brokenness where I, I seen my dad and we bump heads a lot man and i actually wanted him murdered bro um that was really hard for me man because i kind of like you know what just let's do other dirt man and i just get him off that list man and um yeah, I think that was an eye opener where I was about to see my dad get it, put a hit out on him. It's like, it's a, uh, it's challenging, you know, and knowing that life ain't no joke, man. And uh, but to see us now as best friends and, and him schooling me and giving me wisdom and we 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 we, we sharpen up one another now in his word and um, seeing how how graffiti can be used as ministry, anything can be used. For God's purpose and God gave us a gift and talent and um, if you look at how a spray can is full of paint you don't add nothing to it but the paint has to come out and if you before you use the can you actually shake it so the Bible says stir up the gift that's in you which in the book of Timothy so it's in you get it out of you it's in a spray can get it out the spray can um, I started seeing like how it shouldn't stay in the can and remain in the can. It has to come out. It'll, it will never fulfill its purpose in there. So a lot of us can actually go to the grave with our gift and talent and never use it for to glorify God. And knowing this whole time, he gave you a gift. And, and I see it too, man, is don't live to be 80 and never know your purpose. Never know God's given purpose in your life. I, I rather had like thought about it like, man, pass away early, but live out his purpose. Than to, to live a long life and never fulfilled it, never know why you was here, you know, never, never understood um, why are you still here. So if you still here and you can hear the sound of my voice, man, there's still a purpose, there's still hope, there's still a divine plan for your life. Um, but outside of the will of God, you ain't gonna see it. And I found it in His Word, man. And then if you realize how real it is, and if you believe it, you have to receive it. Um, it'll 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 fulfill you and uh, all this stuff that we try to find outside of the things of ourselves we go to beer we go to drugs and this is whole full circle is that everything i needed was within me i just needed like my wife helped me find it uh, my gift the leadership uh, my talent is like she knew something was different about me so she led me to christ and if, if we can just be that light and the salt the beacon of light into this world where people need to see there's still hope um, and it's found in the hope of glory which is Jesus Christ and that's why I represent him uh, the best way I know how is through, through spray paint and the paint if you look at the paint that's what brought me to the cross and this whole time it's spelled paint so this whole time I was already experiencing my life through paint and uh, through my brokenness and that's what brought me to the cross this whole time. I didn't realize it. But his 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 
my story is actually his glory and history. If you break that word history down, it's H I S, his, and it's his story. So this whole time, it was all about him. It was never about me. I was created to worship him. He was not created to worship me. So to give everybody a little nugget too is like, start seeking the God that made man, not the man made God. Much love, you guys. Stay blessed. Um, if you want encouragement, man, my page is, is all to edify the body of Christ. Um, I keep Christ in the center of it all. Uh, just know, man, that that there is no other name that any man can be saved but through Jesus. And that's in Acts 4.12. And, um, yeah, his word is true. It's alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, man. I pray y'all have peace and comfort and you seek him on your own and why he may be found. Real talk. So I'm Ruben Orozco and um, with DNG Designs and just I just want to give a shout out to Thomas, man, for actually just believing in, in what I do and and considering me for this um and thank y'all for watching the breakdown god bless